Okay, so we're going to start section 10.5. So in 10.4, we were adding and subtracting radicals. Now we're going to be uh, multiplying, right? So this is multiplication. And, um, well, earlier we had this relation. If you have the nth root of a times b, um, because it's a product, right, you are allowed to break it apart as the product of the two nth roots, right? And so we did that a lot in the, in the previous uh, video, uh, in the previous section. Um, but you can also go the other way, right? You can take the product of two radicals, so, right, as long as they're both the same index, right, so they're both square roots or both cube roots, then you are allowed to write it as a single square root or cube root of the product, right? So we're going to be using this. Now there's one, one important condition that these have to be, right, so the nth root of a and the nth root of b have to be real numbers, right, so they cannot be imaginary. Let me try that again. So these are real numbers. And in this section, we're going to assume that A and B are both positive, right? So all the variables, right, all variables are positive, right? And so because of that condition, that ensures that everything is real, right? The only time you get an imaginary number, if you remember, is if you have, say, the nth root of a negative number and n is even, right? So like a square root, like a square root of negative 4 or the fourth root of negative 7, right? So these would be imaginary numbers. And we're, that's not going to come up uh, in this section um, or the next. So we don't have to worry about any of that here. Okay, so uh, let's just see how this works, right? Let's do some examples. Um, Example one, suppose I just have the square root of three times the square root of seven. Well, you do exactly as you think you should do here, right? Which is multiply three times seven and then take the square root. Right? And of course, three times seven is 21. And so we end up with the square root of 21 and there's no way to simplify this, right? Because it, it's the product of just two prime numbers, three and seven. So, yep, in this case, that's all there is to do. Okay, and, and granted, this is an easy one, so we'll get to some harder ones later, but uh, just to give you the idea, right? So let's try another one. How about the square root of five times the square root of 20? Well, you do the same thing, right? You just take the square root of 5 times 20, and 5 times 20 is 100, but now we get the square root of 100, and so we should be able to reduce that, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say reduce, but simplify it, right? Simplify to its lowest terms, in which case the square root of 100 is just 10. So the answer here is, is, is just 10. Um, right? Okay, um, so how about one with cube roots? So let's say I have the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 10. Okay, so they're both cube roots, right? And so using the same rule, you can take the cube root of 4 times 10. And 4 times 10 is 40. But now, again, we, we want to not just multiply, but we want to multiply, right, we should say multiply and simplify. Those are going to be the directions. Sorry, I didn't make that clear earlier, but yeah, we're going to multiply and simplify. So multiply, we did, and now we need to simplify this. So take your 40. Well, you can see where this comes from, right? So you're probably going to do 4 times 10. Um, I'll make them a little bigger. Sorry about that. So 4 times 10 is 40, 
and 4 is 2 times 2, and 10 is 2 times 5. And that's as far as we can go. So if you notice, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and 8 is a perfect cube. So we should have split this up as 8 times 5. And let's do that now, right? So 40 is 8 times 5. And now we're going to split it apart, right? In other words, we're going to go the other way and break this apart as, oops, sorry, the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 5. And finally, the cube root of 8, by now you should know that that's just 2, so this is 2 times the cube root of 5. And 5 is a prime number, which means we can't break it down any further, right? So that's our final answer here, that this is equal to 2 times the cube root of 5. Okay. Now, what happens if you, for example, leave it as the square, uh, sorry, the cube root of 40? Well, remember, we want to multiply and simplify, right? So don't forget the simplify part. So in other words, if you leave it as the cube root of 40, you'll only get partial credit. Um, or, well, now that you're doing this on Connect Math, um, it, it might not even give you any credit. Um, so, you know, make sure you, make sure you simplify all the way to get full credit. Um, and on Connect Math, uh, you know, it, it just might mark you wrong. Now that said, I will go back and check. And if you do answer, you know, partially correct, I will give you partial credit for that. But, um, but in general, you want to simplify completely, right? So, so, so yeah, don't leave it like this. You want to simplify all your answers. Okay, um, so let's go on to the next. Okay, so we want to multiply and simplify the square root of 18x cubed times the square root of 6x. Okay, so obviously the, the first thing you can do here is to just combine them all under the single square root. So we have 18, and we can multiply the numbers first, so 18 times 6 and the next cubed times x. Okay, so 18 times 6, uh, 108, right? 18 times 6 is 108, I think, yeah? And then x cubed times x, remember, here's where you add the exponents. 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay. Now, is this simplified? Probably not. So most of the work now is to simplify it, right? So now, because we have a, a number and a variable, we, we can split those apart. Let's take care of the square root of 108, and then the square root of x to the fourth. All right, 108. We did that, right? So, you well, let's do where it came from, 18 times 6, remember that? And 18 is 9 times 2, and 6 is 3 times 2, or 2 times 3. So we can see we're going to have 2 times 2 is 4, and then 9 is already a perfect square, right? So 9 times 4 is 36, and then we still have this, this left over, that's the 3. So we're going to break this apart as the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. Again. Square root of 36, that's our perfect square, right? And square root of 36, of course, is 6. And the square root of 3 is the square root of 3. We have to leave that alone because that's as simple as it gets. Okay, so that's the square root of 108. It's just 6 square root of 3. Now, what about the square root of x to the fourth? So if you remember last time, or in the last couple of videos, we did this two different ways, right? The first way is to say, well, because this is an index of 2, it's a square root, I want to write this as x squared. However, we can't just change the 4 to a 2. What we can do is break it apart as, right, 2 plus 2, right? Not, not 2 times 2, although that's also 4 by coincidence, um, right? So 2 plus 2 is 4, so you can break them apart as x squared times x squared, right? And each of these is just x, so this is just x times x which of, oops, which is just x squared. So 6 squared of 3x squared. 
Remember though, we tend to prefer anything without a square root to go in front. So this is gonna be six x squared and then times the square root of three. And we're good, All right? So that should be our final answer. Six x squared times the square root of three just to write down the equation again, right? Right, now, before we go on, let's do this the other way. If you remember, right, the square root of x to the fourth, because the index is two, it's a square root, you can also write this as x to the power four divided by two, and of course, four divided by two is x squared, and maybe that would have been a lot faster. So, so yeah, either way works, right? Either way you get x squared. Okay, so let's do another one. Okay, we want to multiply and simplify. 4 square root of 3x times, so that's the parentheses, means times, 2 square root of 15x minus 3 square root of 3x. So yeah, a little more complicated, but I think it's, it's doable. Um, so, so let's start again with just the 4 square root of 3x. Now I don't think there's any way to simplify this or any way to simplify these inside here. So if you remember th this, because you have parentheses, this looks a lot like just a times b minus c. And remember we're going to use the distributive property, multiply a times b and then minus a times c. So that's the idea here. We're going to take all of this, multiply by the first term here. So we're going to get 4 square root of 3x times 2 square root of 15x, right? And then minus, right, because that's a minus here. So we're going to subtract this times the second term. So we have 4 square root of 3x, oops, it goes over the x too, and then times 3 square root of 3x. That's a 3. Okay, right, so let's look at the first term here. Notice we have 4 times 2 on the outside. 4 times 2 is 8. Let's, let me try that again. Still getting used to this stylus? All right, 8. And then we have the square root of 3x times the square root of 15x. And we can combine them, right? We can do 3x, oops, 3x times 15x, right? And then the same thing for the last two terms here. How do you multiply these? We have 4 times 3 is 12. And then we have the square root of, well, 3x times 3x. So we still have the 8 here. And then what's 3 times 15? 3 times 15 is 45. And x times x is x squared. Right? And while we're at it, 3 times 3 is 9, so this is the square root of 9, and then, sorry, x times x is also x squared. Okay, so far. Well, remember, we can split these apart now. We can look at the square root of 45 separate from the square root of x squared. And we might as well do that here as well. Square root of 9, square root of x squared, right? So let's look at the 45. 45, of course, is... Well, 3 times 15, right? Um, but 15 is 3 times 5. So it's this 3 times 3, that's going to be our perfect square. That's going to be 9, right? So we can now break this apart as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, right? Because 9 times 5 is 45. And the square root of x squared, well, we're assuming x is positive again, so that's just x, right? No need for absolute value here. Um, although back in 10.1, remember, if x could be positive or negative, then you need absolute value. But we're not worried about that anymore. Right? All right, and we still have, well, 12. I'm going to just rewrite everything here. And this is also, of course, just x, right? So remember, square root of 9 is 3, so this is 8 times 3 times the square root of 5 times x. And the square root of 9, this square root of 9 here, these are both equal to 3. So 12 times 3 and then times x, right? 
Okay, 8 times 3 is 24, and we can bring the x in front, right? So 24 times x times the square root of 5. And then minus, well, 12 times 3 is 36, 36 times x. And I think that's about as good as we can do here because the square root of 5, there's no square root of 5 over here, right? So these are not like terms. Right? So I guess we're done. We can leave that alone. In fact, this is how I prefer you write it. You could, of course, factor out a 12 and an x. And when you factor out the 12, you get 2 square root of 5 for the left, and then you have minus 3 on the right. So if, if you want to simplify it, I mean, I wouldn't say simplify. I would say, right, you want to factor this. If you factor out the GCF, the GCF here is 12x. Um, but personally, I'm not, I'm not concerned that, you, I mean, you should know how to do that, but at this point, um, I would accept either. Um, right. Okay, next one. And this, we're going back to numbers. There's no x's here. We want to multiply and simplify the square root of 5 plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 minus the square root of 3. Okay. So... Right, this should remind you of something, right? This should, this looks an awful lot like this, right? But anytime you have a binomial times a binomial, you just use FOIL, right? So first, right, and then the outside is minus AB, and the inside is plus AB, and then the last is minus B squared. And notice that the middle two terms add up to zero. So you're left with a squared minus b squared. And you probably remember that from your factoring days back in chapter 6. Um, but the, the important thing is to do FOIL here, right? So if you do the first two terms, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Yeah. You, you can do that in your head, I'm aware. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it like this. I'm gonna, just going to go step by step here, right? And then the square root of 5 times negative square root of 3 is the square root of 5 times square root of 3 with a minus sign in front. And then the inside terms is plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. And then we have a po the last two terms, a positive times a negative is negative, and then square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Square root. All right, so like I say, 5 times 5 is 25, so you probably did that already. Here, this is, that's, sorry, that's a 5. So 5 times 3 is 15. And this is also square root of 15, but with a plus sign. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. So you know what square root of 25 is. It's just 5. And square root of 15, we don't exactly know what that is. However, right, you're just subtracting square root of 15 minus the square root of 15. Right? It's like negative 2 plus 2. It's, it's 0. Right. So this adds up to 0. And then finally, square root of 9 is 3. So we're left with 5 minus 3, which of course is 2. And that's the, that's the answer. This is just all equal to 2. Notice that because this is in this nice form, right? notice that you're squaring things that happen to be perfect squares, or square roots of perfect squares, so that, that gives you nice numbers. But just to show you that it didn't have to be that way, let's, let's do another one. Um, right, so again, we'll, we'll multiply and simplify. Um, how about 2 square root of 6 minus the square root of 5 times um, 3 square root of 2. Let's do plus... Um, Um, I don't know, S how about square root of 7, right? So again, we're just going to FOIL this. And so the first, well, let's see if we can do this all at once, right? We know 2 times 3 is 6. And then we have the square root of 6 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 6 times 2 is 12, right? And then for the outside, we have we still have the 2 here. Let's try that again. So 
So we still have plus 2. And then 6 times 7 is 42. And then for the inside terms, we have a negative 3 times the square root of 10, right? Because 5 times 2 is 10. And then we have a negative, right? So for the last, we have a negative times a positive is negative. Square root of 5 times 7 is 35. Okay. Now, if, if I went too fast for you, I would encourage you to multiply it out again and just write them out, you know, factor by factor, term by term, like up here. But uh, I'm trying to combine everything all at once here, right? So we still have to figure out what this is, right? Now, 12, if you remember 12, let me try that, is 4 times 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm not going to do this too fast. I'm still going to write the 6. And then we have the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, right? Now the square root of 4 is 2. And finally, 6 times 2 is 12, with the square root of 3 as sort of the remainder left over, right? All right, 42. Well, remember, that came from 6 times 7. And 6 is 2 times 3. So 2, 3, and 7, those are prime numbers, but there's no perfect squares. So believe it or not, 42, is, as big of a number as that is, that's as simple as it gets. This is simplified already, right? This is already simplified, so there's really nothing we can do with 2 times the square root of 42. Let's just bring it all the way down. That'll become part of our final answer. Okay. And the same thing is true with the square root of 10. 10 is 2 times 5, but these are both um, prime numbers, right? So we might as well bring that down. Minus 3 square root of 10. There's no way to simplify that. And the same thing with minus the square root of 35. Right. Sorry, I should have done this in green here, but uh, I'll do this in green. 35 is just 5 times 7, and these are prime numbers, and there's no perfect squares. So, so the only one we had to simplify here was this first one. We did that, and I think we're good. So this is it looks like a mess, but that's as simple as it gets, right? Right. You know, in other words, each of these four terms down here, each of these four terms are just um, unlike terms, right? So it's, you know, it's like saying we have, you know, 12a plus 2b minus 3c minus d, but a, b, c, and d have nothing in common, right? So you have to leave them as those four separate terms, okay? So yes, this, this would be the final answer to, to all of this because there's no way to simplify that any further. Okay. Okay, next one. Example 8, we want to multiply and simplify. In parentheses, 4 square root of y minus the square root of 3, the whole thing squared. Okay, so I hope you're not thinking just square this and square this, because that's not how this works, right? You have something of the form, say, a minus b squared, and this is not a squared minus b squared. Please don't make that mistake. This is a minus b times a minus b, right? This should remind you of FOIL. So the first thing we should do is write this out as 4 square root of y minus 3 times 4 square root of y minus 3, right? And this is times here, and now we can use FOIL, right? So first, well, I usually do this on top, so the first two terms, 4 times 4 is 16, and then the square root of y times the square root of y is the square root of y squared. You do the outside terms, so this is a positive times a negative, so 4 times 3 is 12 times the square root of y. And then the inside terms, you have a negative 3 times 4 is, is negative 12, and then times the square root of y. And then finally, the last two terms, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Are we okay so far? Well, this should look familiar, right? The square root of y squared, it's just y to the power, right, 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So y to the 1 is just y, right? Minus, and now you can see these two terms they don't cancel because notice they're both negative. So you have negative 12 
plus negative 12, right? So you're going to get negative 24 times the square root of y. Right? The, the square root of y doesn't go anywhere, right? It's, um, right? I mean, if you have, you know, 3x plus 3x, right? You have 6x, right? Not 6x squared. Right. If you have negative 3x minus 3x, you have negative 6x, right? So the x is just the, the like term here. These are like terms, like, like radicals, right? Okay, and then plus 9, right? There's nothing we can do with that. And these three terms have nothing in common, right? So there's nothing else to do here. So there's our answer. Right. I hope that helps. Okay, um, I think one more. Let's do, uh, again, we're multiplying and simplifying. 3 squared of 12 plus, six, plus the square root of 6 times 2 squared of 3 minus the square root of 6. Okay, so again, this is just another FOIL problem, right? So the first two terms, we have 3 times 2 is 6. And then the square root of 12 times 3, remember 12 times 3 is 36, all under the square root. And then the first, uh, the, I'm sorry, the outside terms, this is a positive times a negative, so that's negative 3. And then we have the square root of 12 times 6 is 72. Now for the inside terms, they're both positive, so that's a positive. 2 times the square root of 6 times 3 is 18. And finally, we have a positive, right, positive times a negative, so that's a negative. Square root of 6 times 6 is 36. All right. And the square root of 36 is 6, so this is 6 times 6, which is 12, right? Uh, what am I thinking? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, 6 times 6 is 36. There we go. All right, minus 3 times the square root of 72. Now, what do we do with the 72? Well, way over here, 72, we can think of as, oh, I don't know, 8 times 9 is 72. And 8 is 4 times 2. Oh, 9 is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. So 4 times 9 is 36. And then don't forget this extra 2 here. So we're going to split this up, right? Leave the 3 alone and break this apart as the square root of 36 times the square root of 2 because 36 times 2 is 72, right? right. And the square root of 36 is again 6, square root of 2. And 3 times 6 is 18. So 18, square root of 2. Right. Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I got this backwards, right? This is the square root of 18 times 2. So what do we do with the 18? Same thing, right? 18 is, well, 2 times 9. And actually, that's the best way to do this, right? Because the 9 is the perfect square. So, right, so we'll break this apart as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And square root of 9 is 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. Right? And finally, square root of 36 is just 6, so that's minus 6. Oops. Minus 6. And I think we're almost done. Um, let's look at the, the whole numbers here. We have 36 minus 6. 36 minus 6 is just 30. Right? And now we have... These two terms, notice these are like terms. They're like radicals because they're both square root of 2. But we have negative 18 of them plus 6 of them. So 6 minus 18, I think, is negative 12 times the square root of 2. Okay, so now you got to think about this, right? Because I think we're done here, right? I, I hope you recognize that this is our answer. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, what about 30 minus 12? Isn't 30 minus 12 18? Correct. 30 minus 12 is 18. But that's not what this says, right? 
see, the square root of 2 is only with the 12, the negative 12 here, right? It's not with the 3rd. So, so I hope you're not thinking that this is 18 square root of 2. It's not. You cannot do that. Okay? And the reason is because, as, as I, I, well, maybe let me try to explain this again, right? This would be 18 square root of 2 if there were parentheses around the 30 minus 12, right? So 30 minus 12, if they were in parentheses, you would do that first, and that would be 18 times the square root of 2. But notice there are no parentheses here, right? These are two separate terms. This is a minus b, right? There are two separate things here. So you, you cannot combine them, right? I, I mean, put another way, right? If I have 30 minus 12x, right, you know that that's not 18x, right? Right? So that's, the, that's what we're doing here. That's what you, you know, that's, if you did that, you're trying to do this, and, right, you cannot do that. Now, on the other hand, if I had in parentheses 30 minus 12 times x, well, sure, now you do 30 minus 12 is 18. That would be 18x, right? But again, that, that's not what we have here, and that's not what we have here either, right? So, yes, yeah, so the answer, and let me just write it up here to be clear, it's 30 minus 12 times the square root of 2. Okay, right, you cannot combine... Sorry about that. That's that's our that's our answer there. You you can well yeah that's the answer. Um, but the the main thing you have to realize here is that you can't combine these these terms because they're not like terms. One has a square root of two. One does not, right? And if it if it helps, of course, it might help be helpful if you wrote it the other way. If you wrote negative twelve square root of two and then plus thirty, right? And now you can see that right because there's no square root of two here, right? They're not like terms. So you're welcome to write it either way, of course. I mean, you're just writing instead of a minus b, negative b times, uh, sorry, a minus b, negative b plus a. So you can write it either way. But generally speaking, you do want to leave the square root at the end. So I, I guess I would prefer this way to this way. Um, but either way is correct. So I, I hope that helps.